Hi, I'm Anna. And I'm Ben. And we are Autosave. Welcome to our channel. Today we're starting a new season of Attack on Titan. You know, this has been a long show so far. Uh, we, we started a it a journey. while ago and it's been a journey. Yeah. I think it'll be like a year. Um, I believe in November, maybe like November 15th around there. It'll be like the year anniversary of us starting this show, which is really crazy to think about. It really is. And I don't think I appreciate enough everything this show has done for me and given me in terms of content on and off screen and camera. Like, I, I love the world of Attack on Titan and I love the series as a whole up to this point. I wouldn't change a thing. Like, I, it, it's easily going to always hold a place in my top favorites of media mm -hmm. or content ever and entertainment. created. Entertainment, entertainment ever. Entertainment. Right? Like it's mm -hmm. it's just it's it's perfect as it is. I'm excited of course to see more content, but <laughs> the thing is within autosave, within us watching Attack on Titan, we've adhered to a bit of a formula. And that formula is we are working a lot of the time and once we're done working we watch anime and then edit it and then upload it and we're kind of on that cycle continuously we don't really deviate i would like to deviate from that cycle because everything that is attack on titan to me is attack on titan with you and i think that i i would be really bad at discussions or breakdowns if i didn't have you with me i think being a team and having each other to rely on is such a helpful thing to have but for this one intro i think it'd be really cool to separate in our own time and take 15 minutes to just sit down and think about attack on titan all we have is our notebooks and information that we have sat through for the past three seasons where we normally bounce ideas off each other i know i'm talking a lot i'm sorry but usually when we're on camera if I'm trying to gather my thoughts and sometimes I rely on the fact that you're telling your point, but sometimes I might have to interrupt one of my own thoughts just to make sure, I, you know, we're on camera. We're, mm -hmm. We don't want to sit here with dead air for five <laughs> yeah. minutes. So we've never really gotten the chance to just spend a bit of time and think about the series, you know? Yeah. What do you think? Like, I, I don't know. Like, I mean... Anytime I do think about Attack on Titan in the outside world, outside this contained room with a screen and a camera and you, I'm normally also with you. Yeah. And I tell you what I'm thinking. I tell you what I'm excited about. We talk about the show. I'm never like alone with my thoughts on the show. Yeah. Um. So I, I'm curious. I feel like part of me is like, oh my gosh, am I just going to be sitting there for 15 minutes? Am I going to come up with anything to talk about? I don't know. It's yeah. a little daunting. It feels a little bit like I'm like in a little cubicle about to take a test in school. But yeah. I know it's like so, not intimidating that way. It shouldn't be. So to help that, because I feel the same thing. I don't want any added expectation. If, if I go on my own and think, oh, I can figure out the five best dating candidates in this show and I'm going to write them down. That's an option. If I go away and find out three theories that I have, that's an option. 10 theories or three points. Like I can make it whatever I want. There's absolutely no expectation going into it. It's just okay. 15 minutes alone with Attack on Titan. It's like seven minutes in heaven, but with <laughs> a Titan, with this show. With a Titan? Yeah. With the Attack Titan. Do you want to do it? Yeah. Okay, you ready? Okay. Sweet. And we're back. Uh, I looked to my left and realized that you have a lot written down. I don't know what you have written down, but you have more than I have written down. And I am realizing that I was not as uh, concise as it seems you were. I only really wrote down two main points, but the lot, the words you see are all Basically, I wrote it as if I was writing an essay about these points, and okay. they're not bullet points. This is a what I would say about this certain okay. subject, okay. Okay. Um, as if I was so writing you're just more a paper. Organized. Yeah. Um, no, I just I sound more like a crazy person if you were to read mine. Like this is my theory, and these mm. are all my 
my evidence to support it and well i don't really know how we should go back and forth because like we don't know how long each point would take on right we don't know kind of what weight it would hold in in the form of a discussion so since you have more written would you like to start okay I will pick the smaller of the two things uh, that I really have written out. Um, so when we sat down, you know, we didn't really have many guidelines other than, and other than just to sit by ourselves and think yeah. on the show. And one of the first thing that pops into my head is something that perplexed me. Not bothered me necessarily, but definitely stood out in a way that it didn't fit or mesh necessarily in my mind yet with the kind of explanations we've been given of the path of consciousness and memories between the subjects of Ymir. And that is when Historia was holding the letter from her Ymir. Um, I wrote down that royal blood is such a catalyst alone, even without the founding Titan power. The more connected to the original Ymir, the more obtainable the path of memories between Ymir's subjects are. And at first I thought that Historia seeing Ymir's memories through this letter was proof of their personal connection that the two of them have. Um, but I believe while that might be part of it, it's also because of Historia's royal blood. Um, but it still perplexes me. Like, she doesn't have any Titan power herself other than being an Eldian and having the royal blood. And while I could totally maybe get on board and understand it better if Ymir was there in person and Historia had touched Ymir in person mm. and seen this, um, I, I would have been, you know, it would have meshed more for me immediately. But right now I'm like, this was a piece of paper. Historia hasn't gained any Titan power you know, um, and is it just purely supposed to be telling me like, wow, these two characters are really connected through this, this path between the subjects of Ymir and because they feel so strongly about one another, these memories could even come from a piece of paper? Is it a testament to their connection? Um, it, it, it's still a little perplexing to me. I think that's a good point to bring up because it, it, watching it once and then like sitting there trying to make sense of it compared like with all the rules that were like given to us and you know everything in the past like three episodes of season three it, it was hard to make sense of that one it definitely did stand out a bit and i think it it obviously stood out maybe because it meant to be standing out yeah it was added in very specifically um because if Historia was supposed to get these memories from Ymir's past. She could have gotten them prior, like earlier on in the story, and been confused over them even. Especially because we have, like, we have Eren in Titan form. Well, now I'm, like, not sure. Because do Ymir and Historia see each other again after Historia has touched Eren's back when her father's still alive? No. They don't. Okay. So I guess touching Eren and touching the founding Titan might have simply uh, awoken this. Perhaps. The royal blood. Yeah. So that's interesting because two of the things that I wrote down actually I think could end up uh, applying maybe to your point. Um, the first one, the short title is 33.33%. Yeah, 33.33%. The long title is 33.33% of a perfect storm. So, Ooh, are we writing a book? I think that it's interesting to note that imagine that 33.33%, uh, right? There's three things that would take place to get to a percentage that's pretty close to 100. Um. One of those things is the power of the founding Titan. Another one of those things is having the royal blood, right? Mm -hmm. And then a third thing in the mix that would make the perfect storm is something not of royal blood. Because every time that we've had somebody that we know of with the founding Titan's power, they also have that royal blood. Mm -hmm. Aaron, the person without the royal blood being thrown into the mix could be the result or could make the result of a perfect storm. I wrote 
breaks free because mm-hmm. maybe like I think that if you put a microscope to it, like kind of pun intended, is Aaron is the first one that we know who is outside of the family who has this power so might not be compelled and entitled to follow the will Mm -hmm. of the bloodline it's the first person who has ever had true freedom because he is not weighed down by the intention of a past ancestor Mm. so i think that's an interesting point okay and would you say that if aaron hadn't had the attack titan inside of him beforehand before the founding titan do you think he still would have been able to stand up to the will of the king as strongly as he obviously has yes really yeah i think it's because of the attack titan and the attack titan always being the one throughout history that can break through for the sake of freedom that that has a lot to do with it but when i'm thinking about anecdotal evidence like there we we haven't seen anything on screen of somebody holding the power of the founding titan that wasn't part of the bloodline right Mm -hmm. like we we truly i guess don't know how it would be would differ Mm -hmm. yeah um so i don't know that's an interesting point though but it goes into my second point that i think more directly connects the two of our uh, questions or points observations um was ymir about to die Like, we were given a timeline of how long somebody has once Mm -hmm. they are turned into a human with the power of the Titans. Mm -hmm. Was her leaving and, like, acknowledgement of not seeing Historia again, was that not because she was going to even be killed, but because she realistically only had so long? Uh, and maybe I think connecting, do you think maybe the death of a holder of one of these powers would be the signifier or the thing that would make it so that your memories uh, would be able to be seen by somebody Mm -hmm. of the Royal family? It's like, it sends it back, yeah, back home, back home to, to the path that Ymir saw over her head when she awoke from the Titan form after eating Marcel. Yeah. Um, I think we have asked ourselves but never actually done the math of how long Reiner and Ymir and Annie have left. Oh, that's what Um, we should have (laughs) done. Which we should have done. And I remember us saying it and we just have not done it. Yeah. Um, Because, yes, they were given it as kids, but they've been here for a solid chunk of years and it Damn. seemed like there was a, a bit of urgency on Reiner and Bert Holt's part and desperation, I would say, for this last battle. Desperation to kind of close the deal and finish the job. And I think that could definitely go with, we don't have much time left. We need to do this now to make it all worth it or we'll just die. In my notes, I have it written. It could be wrong as that Ymir ate Marcel five years ago. That could be wrong. But that's a possibility, and if that's the case, then it it's not like an immediate death. They I mean, Ymir use, might but... have more time than Reiner, Bertholder, or Annie, because when were they given it? That's they were trained yeah. as children. Were they given it at a very young age and trained, and it was kind of like, just go and do this, you know? And they weren't going to... If they didn't survive, they didn't survive. It's 13, 13 years? Yeah. Hmm. Do you have a next point to touch on? Um... So this is like really long um, and I definitely wrote it as if I was writing a diary. Um, so this might be a little, a little much, I'm excited. but I guess I just need to like read it as, as how it's written. Cause I don't think I could, it's not bullet points, so I can't just break it up uh, for a discussion or like easily summarize what I've written. It's like a really long mid roll that you're writing. <laughs> it's a really long mid roll. Okay. So I wrote... 3x18 is when the Irwin versus Armin debate is happening on the roof. And then the next episode and the after credit of that next episode is the first glimpse of the true gravity that this decision plays in. This Irwin versus Armin. We don't get the true gravity of what that decision will do for the future until the 
after credit of the next episode. Which was seeing Grisha and Marley, Which was seeing right? Grisha as a child. And yes, it was a glimpse and we didn't truly understand what we were seeing, but it was the first glimpse of the true gravity of the situation we were in. And I wrote, the enemy is not just Zeke, Bertholdt, Reiner, Annie, with possibly some other people outside the walls, their home that they wanted to return to, that they sounded like wasn't there anymore. Um, it made me feel like if we can beat Zeke, we have it made. No one will else will be coming. You know, Zeke is is it. Bert Holt, Annie, Reiner, Zeke. Once we beat them, like, we're free. You know, everything's done. At least that's how I felt. Even if I, I think it's more just because I didn't truly, I didn't truly understand the gravity and or want to understand or delve in it too deep. Um, the gravity I wrote, I didn't fully grasp the gravity. And then I wrote, um, why couldn't Aaron and Armin in Titan form with all the other scouts take down Reiner and Zeke? That's what I thought. You know, oh, well, now that we have Armin having eaten the Colossal Titan and Berthold is no longer in the picture to fight against us. Now we have Aaron and Armin in Titan form, Levi and Mikasa being awesome badasses that they are. Like, yeah, let's take down Zeke. Why can't we? And then I wrote, Armin as a Titan or Erwin as a Titan. Did it really matter who was in the suit as long as we had another Titan power on our side? And with the ending of season three, hitting home the idea of others believing that Erwin was the better choice, I focused on my emotions during that scene. And while I agreed with what was being said, I didn't truly click it in my head. This will be a war. A human on human, airship, bombs, superior vessels, a war against people who know everything about you, but you know little to none about. And yes, Aaron has some memories, but what has changed since Grisha, like since his departure from Marley? What new advancements do they have? A whole lot could have happened since Grisha left. So while either Armin or Erwin could have held the Titan power or worn the suit, Erwin was a trained, experienced leader and military commander. And you... A small island paradise are now facing an entire advanced civilization, and maybe more than that one, with their own titans, firearms, ships, planes, and foot soldiers, and more. It didn't rock me until now just how truly emotional and selfish, but also that that decision, like that that decision was until now. It was more than a life versus a life. It was, we are about to go to war, not just go to the basement and rid ourselves of titans. Fuck. That was thick, dude. Oh my god. I got like heated reading that. <laughs> no, I dude, I, I was I was feeling devastated because it was a a really well written point. I don't that, know why I didn't think any of that until now. Because I think we're so caught up in it, you know, um, to get that perspective, but that's it's so right. Um and you can say like not you can't 100% say Erwin would have had the right answers because right. you don't know, like, nobody could have guessed what was actually out there. And but no he, one's to say that Armin can't grow into an amazing leader with having even more great ideas that could help them. It might be a difficult argument to make that Armin right off the bat would have just as good ideas and a way of direction than Erwin would at that time. It's like, um, it's saying, like, yes, it's... I think the issue is that if Armin was given the time that Erwin had had, had to to learn how to be a leader, to to learn strategy, like true military thinking and be a commander with also just how smart he is. You know, if he had that ex just a couple years experience, then maybe this would be a different conversation. And but the gravity is heavy with that decision to me now. And don't you include tragedy in that experience? Because Erwin has had a lot of time to really uh, dull his senses when needed, like to be he able could to go make, on with the plan. He could make quick decisions. Um, like if we think about how long it took Armin to make a decision on a plan from episode like 17 uh, or 16 of season three, Erwin could just you know, dull himself for a second, null those feelings or emotions that might be tied to the people that could be lost with this decision and make the decision, come up with the strategy and just go for it. 
But Armin is still at a state where it took like an episode and a half of intensity for him to come up with the decision to face Bertholdt in the way that he did. Yeah. And he was nervous about it. He was scared about it. And yes, you could say that that gave him maybe more courage now for the next time everyone's everyone's eyes turned to him for a decision, for a, an idea. Yeah. But still, he he doesn't he has not learned and experienced that same same energy that Erwin has been able to practice and that we first saw when we were fighting Annie in her Titan form in the forest where Levi even commented to Erwin about how he was able to just cut off his his feelings about all these people they might be losing right now. Your back's against a wall. You have a war to fight against somebody who you can't even begin to fathom their destruction level. And you don't have a sh- very competent way to go forward. Um, that's and, and Irwin could lead people into a, ba- a lose a losing situation. Irwin led people into a very sad and tragic last ditch. Do this for yourself and yeah. for others to remember you. Charge. And he was able to sway them to do that because of his experience and his leadership and his his energy that he put forth. And, and the people looked at him and they could trust him because it seemed like he understood the gravity and he was willing to make this charge as well. Mm-hmm. And to, to lead people into a now war... I know Hanji's there. Yes, Hanji's there. But people are going to be looking at Armin now because Armin was the person who took Erwin's spot. Yeah. And while Hanji might be a great leader and great commander, we haven't really gotten to see yet how well she might do in terms of leading new recruits. But people will still be looking at Armin and there will still be pressure on him to to promote confidence in, in the people that are joining to fight this war. Yeah. Wow. I don't think I have a point that could like uh <laughs> ta- like even try to like be on the same level as that uh next. So good job for one. And to completely flip it <laughs> I on I got emotional. I got like yeah, really hot while I was reading that. To uh just completely flip it and go a different direction. <laughs> Based off of what we know now, uh, what do you think Rainer, Bert, Annie, and Marcel's childhood was like? Oh, rough and horrible. <laughs> you think? <laughs> yeah, I, I I, take that just from what we saw of Annie and her childhood. And it seemed like maybe people in the town talked about her bad or looked at her bad. And her father was apologizing to her over this this thing that was happening to her and or this decision that he put onto her and how people were acting toward her. So when thinking about this, I imagine that Eldian kids are taken away from uh, the the mass populace of Eldian kids and taken into a program where they have to live amongst a Marlian facility where they are uh, looked after intensely and trained mm, and maybe even brainwashed slightly yeah so i i agree that it probably was not great for anybody it did seem like annie had a different type of s- social status maybe to the rest of them uh with how they talked to each other but that could be just nothing um so that was a point uh another one outro we had uh in season two i believe was those marching titans that we got again in season three i firmly believe that is from the future i think that that is the doom that was foretold from the king and it was a bluff in a certain point of a a point of view but i do believe that is something that we will eventually see or will prevent from happening for like that like, I could see it goal. being a prevent from happening. I think I definitely would agree with you that that imagery fits exactly with the idea of what they would be uncovering if the Marlians really did come and directly attack Paradis. Yeah. Um, and that would definitely be what they were facing. We got another image 
of either people coming to attack and breaking down the walls or something and titans being under there and which yes we haven't talked about it since but it did happen we did yeah. learn that that was true and i could definitely see that that being kind of the impending doom that was foretold how many points do you have more um i just wrote down two little silly things okay i have five more so i'm gonna say one or two more yeah okay, definitely cool? um this one i thought was cool I don't know if I see it happening, but it could potentially. Aaron eating every other person who has the power of a Titan to become the one o original Titan again. I think we talked about that. Yeah. I think I, we I would talked like to about focus that in the discussion of the finale of season three. Yeah. I Is really... that the end goal, you know, to return them all to one body? I could see that being If you could eat or gain all of the powers without being connected directly to the rice blood uh bloodline mm -hmm. then maybe you win maybe game like, that's yahtzee you know you win the game of life i could just i could see it being that they were all meant to return yeah to one and maybe it's once you it could be one of those situations that it broke off into pieces and then once you rebuild it again um it might go away yeah like maybe this power of a titan it was gifted to ymir and then once you give it back to Ymir, oh. it it becomes no oh, more. Hold on. Uh, I, so I had something in my first point written, and I just remembered it now, and like I, it came up. Okay, so that goes off of just what you were saying. Do you think that the uh, the founding Titan's power was given to Ymir's child? Do you think Ymir Fritz had a child of their own that was a that was a, a uh, different from the nine or one of the nine titans chosen for the Eldian empire and she had one of her children among them and that was the one who got the founding titans powered um so one of the my ideas is that possibly all of them were her children okay i know that might sound silly but i remember yeah. When we were we were told what would happen to someone with the power of a titan if they didn't pass it on so either all of those nine people ate of her body after she died, or they were all children that were born to her. Yeah. And then once she ha gave birth to the ninth one, then she died or and or died in terms of wasn't able to turn into a Titan anymore. Because yes, this is history and lore. Yeah. And we cannot truly believe that that actually meant that she died. Yeah. She could have just given birth, those were her children, and then she no longer held that power. They all did. Mm -hmm. And maybe the eldest child was the founding titan. Okay. Do you want to go a point? Um, <laughs> this is silly. Um, I started to think about what they could non-enemy-wise encounter that could be dangerous to them having never left the walls. <laughs> because at this very end, when we're at the sea, Levi goes, be careful, that could be poisonous. I think yeah. Kanji is like holding like a sea cucumber or something. And I started to think to myself- Salt in their eyes. What could they, in I know, and they're yeah. surprised by the, you know, they're splashing the salt and it's like, ah, it burns. What could they encounter that they don't realize exists oh. that could be devastating and dangerous? They're at the sea. They're little tiny boats out at sea. If they try to cross the sea, do they know what sharks are? <laughs> oh my God. Some like, there are some, some dangerous things that they have probably never ever seen and have no concept of that could kill them before the Marleans even get to them. They're going to really get to enjoy fish and seafood for the first time. They yes, might see a cruise true. liner or two. But they could also try to eat a sea urchin. Yeah, that's true. That's very likely. <laughs> um, gonna be interesting. That's a really yeah. good point, though. They could, hey, they could encounter friendlies for all, all we know. You know, another... Another civilization yeah. that doesn't mean to try to harm them. You know, let's hope that that's the case in, in for their safety. <laughs> all right, well, here's another of mine. If Aaron can see memories of people and Aaron squared, that's the other Aaron who, was who gave the power to Grisha, can see memories of Aaron... Can one have influence when things are remembered? Okay, can you ask that again, but in maybe different words? Um, I'm not a verbal person, really. If Aaron can see memories of Grisha and okay. remember things that has happened from Grisha's point of view, mm -hmm. and the person who gave Grisha 
his powers talked of memories okay, yes. of either Mikasa Grisha or Aaron. Or Armin. Can somebody who has the founding Titan's powers manipulate and influence when memories are when memories occur? When you have like a a uh, flashback when you have when this like when this thing is purest you know like i don't know i feel like we when we talked about it a little bit last episode and or the episode that kruger had that little slip of mixa armin that we were so shocked by we talked about it possibly being a time of intensity and intense emotion within that one of the holders and that's why that maybe Grisha knew of the attack is because he could see it through Aaron's eyes, you know, from Aaron, from, the, you know, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if they could directly choose when to like send the message or send the memory. Yeah. I could see it being more random. Um, It goes into my next one because I was obviously on a mission here. Can you see memories of the founding Titan before you have it? Because in the first know. episode, in episode one, the like we start off with Aaron waking up under a tree with Mikasa, and Aaron had like a flat like a, a flash of events that happened. And I don't remember most of them, but I do remember Aaron, like the Titan that ate Aaron's mom, who apparently is Dina. Right? Mm -hmm. It was Dina. apparently Dina. We saw her there. So obviously Aaron had a dream of something that was going to happen, mm -hmm. which isn't too crazy considering the founding Titan's powers, but he didn't have it yet. So can he access the memories or can the memories be accessed within him before he even has it? Because there's obviously some timey wimey loop. I think going because on. it's all looped and it's all connected. I mean, he didn't have the attack power when the attack happened where we're saying that that's possibly how Grisha knew about it was through Aaron's eyes. He could see that his wife and children were in trouble. And yeah. that's why he had such urgency um, in the matter. And that's still my only idea of, of how he knew the attack was coming. That feels good. There, there could be other theories we have had of some messenger or something that he was alerted to this happening. But I still like to think that it's because he's connected through this attack titan with his son in this loop. Um, so I'm going to say that it is because not only is he a subject of Ymir and they are all connected through the paths above their heads. <laughs> yeah. That it is also because he has the attack titan i think i maybe i don't know i'm still the thing that makes most sense to me is just because he's the first one who has the founding titan's power who isn't part of the bloodline that's mm -hmm. the easiest answer for me um i could back that up with the evidence of the attack titan like as like you know mm -hmm. but he also he's the first person to have both that we know of but he's also the first person to have the founding titan's power outside of that bloodline right so if we do think about that a little a little more, then Aaron is the only one who has shared memories or thoughts or ideas possibly with Kruger and Grisha. Because the things that they were seeing were either people important to Aaron or things that Aaron was probably seeing. Correct. And then Aaron can obviously see from them. Yeah. So is it because, probably, I mean, if... I could see it beca being because he also holds the founding Titan. And Ymir and Reiner and Bertholdt and Annie never talked about being able to see the memories of those that had their Titan before them. Yeah. Did the attack Titan... I wish I could, like, bridge the... Like, draw this out, because I can't... It's hard. Okay. Uh, did the attack Titan bridge the gap of memories in between the founding titan and grisha and aaron squared do you know what i'm saying do you so what's his name well when you start using using like math terms kruger okay like kruger squared, kruger kruger you lose did, me <laughs> did okay the second aaron Maybe not even Aaron. Maybe the second that 
Grisha was given the powers of the founding Titan, right? Mm-hmm. Right? Right? Yeah. No. Yes? He, yeah, he must have. Yes. Yes, he, he had it because he um he bit Frida. Yes, but he had it in a syringe. So did he no, ever but hold he it? had he had to turn Aaron into a plain Titan beforehand. Yes, okay. So the syringe would have just Correct. been... Okay, just making yeah. sure. Sorry, I almost stumbled. Thank you. Um, <laughs> did, because uh, I think it's a good train of thought, did the Attack Titan bridge that of the Founding Titan and the Attack Titan's history so that the Attack Titan then, the holders of the Attack Titan, could access the history of the Founding Titan since one day the Founding Titan's holder also will hold the power of the Attack Titan. Is that how Kruger even knew some of the things that he said about how the king was going to do nothing Maybe. inside the walls and was was held under the spell and the brainwashing of the king, all of the founding Titan people? Perhaps, yeah. Mm. But if it's so, it's so fucky because uh, because if. Because then it locks it in almost, right? Mm-hmm. Then it almost locks it in to these three people of Kruger, Grisha, and Aaron that have the un, uh, unsullied memories, I guess. But it technically, wouldn't it affect all the Attack Titan people too? And their memories if those well, two may- were connected? Well, if you think about what the Attack Titan is, was it given its kind of description of being able to break through to freedom because the loop of the attack titan is now connected with the founding titan is that why the attack titans throughout history were the ones to break through for freedom the word it like the wordage that kruger used was very specific to make you feel like they were the ones to break out of this cycle yeah and who else is out of the cycle? The founding Titan. The one with all of the actual true freedom. memories yeah. is not within the cycle. Like, I, I'm just saying it, like, whether it's Aaron or somebody in the future, this could be the only time, like, somebody holding both of these powers outside of the influence of the bloodline could influence the timeline not or not the timeline could influence the whole story past mm-hmm. and present no because it because if it's infinitely connected then you are a person non-influenced by the person who first influenced everybody god yes. i'm confusing myself <laughs> um okay uh i have i have two more things i think you have one yeah do you want to go and then i'll finish my two quick ones up um or what What do you think I give one and then, and then you, i'll give okay. one unless they're connected no they're not okay uh fulfilling way for annie to come back that's just like a oh um i just want it to be like after everything's over um hitch is there and hitch is like you know you're my roommate now i bought a two-bedroom apartment yeah you you're gonna come live with me um and that's just how it happens and yeah. then she I don't, because I feel like, is she aging inside this crystallization form that she's in? We I don't, don't know. know. I think that, uh, does is the Titan clock still on, regardless of aging, you know? Uh, is, she always, for some reason, came off extremely, like, more protective uh, than, of Aaron than uh, Reiner or Bert Holt in regards to taking him in the coordinate. Uh, she seemed like she was maybe the least interested in doing this thing that they all had to do but she was very task oriented yeah she seemed the because i remember her face when reiner kind of snapped and yes bert made the same face when marco and his life was on the line but she was also not the one using the language against the eldians like that they were devils and gross you know it seemed like she was like sh- like let's what what are you saying right now i think that she was like the one out of the three that like i'm doing this because i have to do it and i'm trying to not get my emotions involved but i really don't want to be doing this because i don't necessarily agree yeah Wh- i think she was hopeful that aaron there was something about him and his 
his drive for freedom and his his as people would call it his brattiness that would kind of make all of the sins that she has has made would forgive all of them i have some god i have some memory of annie and aaron fighting and annie's titan form having a weird look on her face is it when they said the fusing thing and we were like is that no no no, because that that was in the city i'm talking about in the forest Mm. um we said we didn't think it's. it seemed like she wanted to fight him. I thought it seemed like she recognized something or she was like ca- like caught off guard by something. She definitely and, was caught off guard by something. And I'm wondering if she had any memory kind of thing too back then. Mm, like in their fight, did she see something? Or maybe even before their fight, she saw Aaron a certain way and he wasn't that way when they... I don't know. I don't know, man. Um. Okay, yours. Um... I said, my last thing is, um, because you kind of said it before we broke into our little 15 minute, uh, alone time. I said, who would you date? Top five. (laughs) I don't think ranking is too hard, but you have to pick five characters and maybe you could rank them. (laughs) Dead or alive? Oh yeah. Dead or alive. They could be dead. That's fine. Fuck, that it gives you more choices. So much harder, dude. Oh, that uh, made it harder than yeah, alive. Yeah, makes Then it I'll harder. say alive. Um, but no, you've already. Uh, do you have any answers? Since like, not thinking about too much. Do you have any answers off the top of your mm. head? Because I'm really trying. Well, I would like to see. Like, I, I would think Levi right off the bat. I would be like, yeah, Levi. But then I'm like, ooh, but he would be really rough to live with. So I'm like, I don't know. That's a tough one. I feel like Hanji could be fun to be married to. Yeah. Yeah. She'd yeah. be off doing like mad scientist stuff in the basement. And yeah. then she'd, that'd be fun. Um, Probably Jean. You can't pick Mikasa, I feel like, even if you would go for Mikasa. But like, you can't pick Mikasa because I think it's always hard to pick characters that are so overly attached to other characters. When you're, like, doing, like, a funny bit like this. Yeah. Because it's like, ooh, but they would be so obsessed with their best friend. Like, no, why would you want to marry someone that's, like, overly obsessed with their best friend? Yeah. I'm I'm really, I'm really <laughs> struggling here. Sorry. Um, I have three. I'm not doing, like, an order. Just <laughs> to be, like, because it's so hard. Would be the best husband or wife. Would be the worst. Uh, there are some characters that would be the worst. Um... I'm sorry, Zeke, but I'm not picking you. What you did to your parents is... I can't... I can't forgive it. I can't. Okay. All right. I have four in no particular order. Or five in no particular order. Is that okay? Mm-hmm. Um, Historia. Okay. Isabel from No Regrets. Moblet. Rico. The one with the glasses. Oh, the one with the glasses. Um, And then that girl in season one in the background by the dinner table. <laughs> She was pretty good. Um, but yeah, top five. No particular I was like, is he going to say the horse? No. Or is he going to say the girl in the background that he used to talk about all the time when we were first watching the Who show? Who do you think I am? The horse? What horse? I don't even remember a horse. I'm surprised name. you didn't pick Petra. Uh, well, I thought that was the obvious answer. So, so you wanted to go for the non-obvious yeah. answers. Okay. Fair. Yeah. Okay. What was your last point? Um... I think Aaron's going through independent growth and that can be scary Um, because there's two ways to look at it in my mind. There's self growth, good or bad, right? You're trying to better yourself. You're motivating yourself. You're in your own head in a very positive light, or there's a growth that you're stuck on an Island isolated for three years and you don't know what direction you're going to go. Um, Aaron has a lot of internal growth with seeing leg- like actual lives in his mind that are happening that isn't his. And he isn't sharing those details to the utmost degree that I think he maybe would have in season one. Hmm. Uh, like, he, there are some things. and so, There's just more internal dialogue. And that is scary because I think it's resulting 
and the ease of manipulating and lying to people like Armin to continue. I think that it's getting a little casual at how uh, willing he's able to to move the yard line or whatever you'd call it football he, he's willing to move that down further at the cost of armin's well-being for no particular reason because in this episode this last one we had him kind of like perpetuating the lie maybe before realizing it himself of going to find freedom and then that's the end of the episode was aaron's very quick short point of uh, once they're done fighting the other people, then what? Mm. I think Aaron's just go like he's he's going through something. Oh, well, he's it's like it's like what Hanji said and what Levi said. You know, yeah, it's because he's fifteen what, year old boy, yeah, <laughs> going through some things. Definitely. I mean, if you suddenly got all of the memories of your father just inserted into your brain that would come out at random. You don't even oh. get to choose when you think of these things that your father saw or did, and they just come out at random. You'd be yelling things. You are you are very right. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right. Do you want to finally get into the episode? Yeah, I guess so. All right, sweet. <laughs> I'm having trouble containing my excitement. Blinking? Birds. Sea birds? Are we watching the right thing? You think? <laughs> this is Marley. Look at the armband. Yeah. But his band is yellow and this guy's is white. Dig. Four-year war? Is this now or in the past? Titans that I... This is for us. This is for us, Anna. Fort, Fort Slava. Slava. I don't know if I can get all these names. <laughs> Warrior candidates, candidates to the front lines. So this is like an honor, almost. So we they... are pro they're probably fighting somebody else, right? Like another country? They said the Mid East Allied Allied Forces. Fort Slava. Mm -hmm. Successor. The successor the of successor the armor titan of, the... of Reiner. So we're we're four years. Of the, we're four years. That was Reiner. But the successor. Yeah, like someone's oh, gonna somebody succeed taking him. His position? Are are we not? Let's not watch this. I don't know. I'm not watching. Oh, okay. Typically we are we're happy we didn't watch it, right? Yes, typically we are it. happy we did not watch not the watch opening. It. Okay. Okay, let's talk. Hey, what's up? What's up? Uh, so apparently Reiner's four years older and he has facial hair, and I kinda like that. Something I also with, dig it. It's I, awesome. Um they So that means he's about to die. They can't dig, which makes me think they're trying to make a tunnel to Fort Slava. Yeah, maybe which, to get under it. At this point, am I thinking that we have Fort Slava? No, no, it was the Mideast Allied Forces that we are fighting, and they are in the okay. Fort Slava, and they have the port. So do you think that they're fighting a war on two fronts, or are we not involved in any of it? Well, Marley did say that they needed the resources from Paradis in order to fight Correct. The, the wars that they had to fight. Okay. It's interesting to think that the Titans are being utilized in other wars as well as on us within the walls. Right. I didn't think, I didn't consider that. But Well, I mean, if you had Titans, wouldn't you use them to, like, kind of protect your yes, people? Yes, but I feel like I'd use them to jump out of airplanes onto the wall. Mm -hmm. Like, like on, onto where onto we the are. Onto the Fort Slava? Yeah. 
I was wondering why a child was on a battlefield. Hmm. She's gonna die. Internment zone. Does she think her actions and accolades will help every Eldian within the Marlene walls? Railroad. Machine gun. What is the show? Jaw and cart? Titans? That. What is that? A tank? Anti-Titan cannons. It'll kill it in a single... Mobile, better cannons. Even, Even one, one of the nine. nine. Could be born within the walls, right? Nine years ago. Losing the colossal and the female. It's interesting that they call it the female titan for anybody who has it, right? Okay. <laughs> and yet, the Eldians aren't in charge. 800 Eldians. Oh, this makes my stomach hurt. They're just sending them. It's like Armin's grandfather being yeah. sent out. Those faces. Oh! So the Beast Titan is always meant to lead. You think it's, uh, Zeke's son? Maybe. <laughs> Just one promising candidate. And seven hand grenades. Why is she so lovable? I don't know how to feel. <laughs> what is with her? <laughs> this is crazy! I'm in a weird place emotionally right now. This is wild and crazy. Oh my god. She's How is she doing this? How is she doing this? Is she throwing it? <laughs> There's no shot. <laughs> There's no way, right? <laughs> Don't move too early or they're gonna shoot you. <laughs> Epic. We do know shot put is uh, very well studied in their world. It's messed up. She's dead. Oh, don't say oh, you're gonna sacrifice yourself. Do you see its bone? It looks like Ymir in body shape. And it looks like the a bone of what Armin was looking like when he first ate, uh, Berthold. There's no way. No, right? They're not just gonna turn them into titans and throw them out of the plane, right? They're willing to use them as suicide vest <laughs> squads. They're going to throw them out of windows, too. Especially with the armored train gone. <sighs> it's fingers. The Dude, fucking backpack, yeah. bitch! 
Oh man, it has like a face mask. It looks better that way. So that's a warrior. It has it's like like a tank on its back and people are shooting out of it. God, Gabby reminds me of Hanji. He knows what he's saying. They think you're cowards. God. Seems like he just wanted, like, someone to treat him like a human. They're being dragged! He's turning them! Oh, God! Alright. <laughs> what the fuck's going on? Some of them might die from the fall, but... That is terrifying. These cannons do a lot of damage that they have. Kinetic bombardment, okay. Reiner, what happened to you? I didn't know he could look so cool. His hair even looks cooler. Oh! <laughs> Shells that penetrate even his armor. A secret weapon? <gasps> the train! The animation's amazing. The CG on the Titans looks phenomenal. <gasps> oh, okay. Galliard. I think you're right. I think Galliard has Ymir's Titan power. Did you see the people? <laughs> so fucking weird. So because they couldn't obtain the Founding Titan and the resources they needed... Is he gonna just throw them?! Perfect yeah, game. Is. Perfect game. Did Reiner just die? Why did they come back? Was that all from the ships? <laughs> they didn't fight at all. Oh, but Kenny. All right, you son of a bitch, y you out there, what have you done with Attack on Titan? What is this? What am I watching? <laughs> Remember how we felt when we heard, Kenny! And we were yeah. like, what show is this? That's how I feel again. <laughs> Did you know that Reiner was gonna have such a major glow up when he grown up? It he wasn't so just good. in looks. Like, him... I, okay, first of all, hope he's not dead. Might be. Well, I, think um, he's, I think he might be dead. Or at least about to die, and then they're going to feed him to Gabby. Uh, well, they did give us all of these candidates who were there specifically to inherit or be successors of his power. 
So having them all there on the scene of his death would be very kind of yeah. perfect in terms of writing. So I feel like this would have have to been his death. Reiner being like, I'm sick of walls and then cutting his hand in midair and like how he looked and what he did once he landed might have been one of the most badass moments that anybody has has, has ever done. Like, period. That was so cool. I was like, I was so there for that. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm a little taken aback. This yeah. is so far in another direction where I thought we'd be, especially after talking about like how what the show has given us so far and what direction we thought we were going to be going in and how these things that we've learned is going to connect. Mm -hmm. And then we start this episode and the entire thing, we haven't seen any of the characters that we right. ended last season with. This entire thing, this entire episode felt like season one, episode one, but instead of Aaron, it's Falvo. Fal Falco? Falco? Falvo? Was it a V or a C? I don't know. It felt like he was being painted. It, it was like it started with him right off the bat. He was the one that wanted to take care of the injured, injured soldier. It seems like it's leading him to be the one, not Gabby. That's why I thought Gabby was going to die in her, like, yeah. attempt at getting rid of the train. And it felt like... Falco. God, remember <laughs> how, like, we've talked about... Paradise now that we know what it's called and and we talked about it before we knew what it was called is like wow there's so many so many different areas and people and their ideas and why they do what they do and why they would want to stay inside the walls why would these people want to break out of the walls and here it's like why would these Eldians fight for Marley why would these Eldians want to become Marleyan warriors some of them would have the mindset that they would want to prove that they are good like, good Eldians compared to the Eldians in Paradise so that maybe their people were treated better. It's interesting because it's like it opens up another can of worms of, like, here's another group of kids. And they all feel maybe a little differently about the situation they're in. But instead of being scout candidates or being trained to be in the military, they are being trained to become successors of Titans. Yeah. And that's only counting the successors, or the potential successors, not the 800 Eldians there just to be death. Like, it, it, I think I said it, I said it during the episode, it just had such the energy of when we were running out of food, episode three of season one, and we just, oh, well, those are, those are not interior people. Those are, like, people that are not as, you know, important. Yeah. So we're going to just sacrifice them all. That will purge them all. So that we have enough rations for, I guess, the younger people and the people that we deem more important to save and keep healthy. You know what's scary? The, the thought of how many Eldians and how confident of the military leader leadership is uh, in the amount of Eldians under their control that they are confident enough to just send people to their deaths with bombs strapped to them, not even with like turning them into Titans. Like my first thought was, oh, of course they don't care. They don't want them there. They don't like them. Nah, like it is one of the things that is very crucial to their survival and their place in the I world. I think that's one of the most annoying parts of how they yeah. treat the Eldians is they talk about them as these devils and horrible and not worth it. But you need gonna use them. It. You need them in order to keep fighting these wars. And you're trying to use them as weapons. I, like, you're basically showing and telling their worth while, like, shitting on them at the same time. It's like, no, it's because you are embarrassed or too prideful to admit that you need them around to be able to further yourselves as much as you want to. Truly, I wrote it down, truly, the ones who have the most potential to be evil are the ones who control the Eldians. Mm -hmm. Not even the Eldians themselves, but the ones who want to utilize that devil power. And the only reason they can control the Eldians is because so many of them didn't fight and weren't the bad Eldians that kind of terrorized the Marleys to begin with. They're just people. Like, average people. And average people don't just go to war or decide to kill people. They're just kids, moms, dads, families, just normal people 
who did not get involved and weren't involved in any of the conflict, don't want to harm anyone or take anyone over. Of course, like, I feel like if we're thinking about why are those people actually soldiers, um, I feel like some of them might have joined because of a similar attitude that Gabby has of I want to prove that we're we're good in, in whatever small way that I can. I would say some of them felt like there's nothing I can do with myself, my, my life other because they are kept in a separate kind of society from Marley, really, and treated horribly. But I feel like a lot of them were there either because it was the only option they had or because they wanted to prove that they were good people. What chokehold does uh does Marley have on the Eldians? Is it They have some I mean, like, think about the king being passive over on Paradise. All of the Eldians are passive to this wrong and sin that they committed. I'm just saying that the two people the three most destructive four maybe people that we've seen this episode are all Eldians. Mm -hmm. And do they have a physical power that holds over them? Because I don't think so. I think they truly believe in what they're doing. So like, damn, you have one like Erwin 2.0 over there convincing the Eldians to continue to win control for the people who are suppressing your entire... Mm -hmm race i think it all stems to who's the leader of yeah. the eldians with the titan power that has the power to awaken eldians the power Zeke. to lead them and they'd be very careful with who they gave that specific power to i'm sure the person would be vetted a lot they would be s surveyed They'd be studied as a child to make sure that they didn't have this plan like Kruger did, where he was just trying to become a Marleyan warrior and have a Titan power in order to basically overthrow them eventually. Because the Beast Titan seems to be the one that is the closest to the founding Titan in terms of importance and ability to control. Yeah, agreed. I agree with you. And I feel like, gosh... Zeke, what is your problem? You're a military general, right? He's picking up bullets, and metaphorically, he's pick he's putting down bullets whenever he's activating Eldians. Just because you're making bullets doesn't mean that you have full control over what they do, and I think that was alluded to us very early on in even Season 2 when we first met the Orang Titan. I think that it solidifies Zeke and the Beast Titan's place as the commander or general of a military mm -hmm. in that place of the nine Eldian Empire. He's like he has the power to make this ammunition, and they're using it to great accomplishment here for their own right. But uh, it's not like the true best of the best uh, Titan power, right? Mm -hmm. If we put Zeke and his leadership or his being a commander or whatever, and of a commander of the people that are the same as him, and we compare him to the other example of blonde leader that is the same physically as those that he is leading into harm's way, Erwin, and we think to that conversation on the tree with Levi, where it was really hammered home that to be a leader, you need to somewhat remove yourself from the people that are losing their lives in order to make strategic decisions. Yeah. But I just can't with, with in Irwin's case, those people were, vo were volunteers. They joined the scouts. They yeah. willingly went. It didn't seem the same way for these Eldians that were just dropped from the sky that Zeke turned into Titans. I agree with you. He's willingly using people that even if he doesn't care if he's ancestrally connected to, I guess he doesn't care about that. It's and like, even though he doesn't care about that, he's using people as bombs. I think to make it very broad and vague to try to get a grasp on it, it's like somebody from an oppressed group is on the council of... Uh, organization that is working to oppress that group mm -hmm. right 
Like it, it's deep. Like you, I would love to just know the entire life of Zeke. I want to know him to this. I want to know Zeke's head I, so bad. I truthfully am scared that at the moment Zeke and Aaron are the same person. I think that both of them might have the idea that the only way for peace and war is awful, right? And the only way for peace is to kill everybody everybody else if we defeat all of our enemies. Don't know how likely that is to ever happen, but I think that both of them might have that same idea, which is dangerous. Do they see a future does, of, of liberation, of better treatment for the Eldians if Eldians keep proving good example of, I, that they are willing to fight on behest of I Marley? I think Falco might. I don't know about... Um, Zeke. N- and Gabby. I mean, Gabby spoke on... Some, it, it, like, took me for a second. I was like, whoa, okay. When she was like, yeah, those devils on Paradis, we need to show that we're nothing like them. And I'm like... No, they're the same as you. They just got away. Well, yeah. <laughs> you guys are the same. But to her. They just escaped the oppression and you unfortunately did not leave. But then they were oppressed in their own way over yeah. there. But it, it's so, it, it makes your stomach hurt a little bit. Like hearing people, people being like scoffed at in the, in that way and called words that they shouldn't be called and compared to things that they shouldn't be called like compared to and it hurts your stomach as a viewer a little bit hearing that because you're like oh i don't like that yeah oh you just i just saw it we got confirmation that backpack bitch is um a marlian warrior and not just a titan that zeke was controlling i'm trying before you before you (laughs) spoiled everyone I'm kidding. Uh, I'm trying to find out if we got Backpack Bitch's name. God, what a oh, cool device. She says, um, Gabby says two names, and one of them were Gilliard and then Peek? Pike? It was like P I E C K. That was early on. Yes. No? But she said, when are we going to bring them out? Correct. Where and then, can I find that? Is uh, it was at the very beginning. And she also said the Armored and Beast later. And I know those aren't the Armored and Beast's names because I know the Armored and Beast. She said at the very beginning, and she was like, when are we... I think she asked the commander or something. When she was saying about her mission? Or no? I Oh, no. She didn't ask. I didn't think it she was, asked. Um, it was the candidate to take over the Beast Titan. Yeah. He Colt. asked Colt. It was around here. I think it was around here. No. No, it wasn't. Okay. I can't. I can't. I don't know where it was. But it was like P-I-E-C-K, and it was Gilliard and P-Name. P-Name? P-Name. I'm either going to call him Backpack Bitch it was. Or it was within the first couple P-name. minutes of the episode. Was it before or after? I think it was before the intro, no? Maybe. Because I thought that he was trying to suggest it. Maybe, yeah. Let's, and then they were like, you, you can't give us orders. I'm like... Can you just, like, calm yourself for a second because you're in a war zone and just not be a dick, you know? Like, that's that's how I felt yeah. about them. The mid... Could you re- write down, if you haven't already, Mid-East Allied Forces? Mid-East Allied... And Fort Slava. Forces. Fort Slava. <sighs> I am having trouble finding the name because I remember it like being said with Galliard the first time, right? Whose memories did Fal- Falco have? Because he said that he was swinging around or something. Oh, swinging a sword around? Swinging a sword oh, around. Oh, fuck. And- I'm so glad you brought that up. Thank <laughs> you. I'm so sorry. Uh, Was it Falco for sure? Do it was know? him, and he, because he was, he, he hit his head at the very beginning when they're bandaging his head, and he's like, and there were titans. Oh, this is who such are you a guys? Point. Do you I'm remember so this war? We've been in for four years, and then he says, "Who are you guys?" And then he says, "Wait, huh? Wasn't I flying around with a sword oh, just now?" I don't think that's a bit. And whoosh, and there were titans that I, titans that you what? 
Is he connected? Dude, he's Does connected. he become a titan? He's gonna be a titan. He's connected. He's connected. But who's who would he's be, gonna sw- be flying around with who a sword? Be- and I'm going to finally get a, a titan, titan holding weapons with a fucking weapon. And it's gonna. I mean, make we're seeing like a titan with like a mask life. and a tank on. Its that doesn't back. fucking matter. It's the it's back a sword. Bitch. But like, what titan do we know of? What do you that call would him, be- P-Man? P man, P boy, P P name was what I was saying, but that's not a cool. If name. I'm honest, yes, I could sit here for two minutes and say, "Be right back," and then we could be right back here, and I could have the, the correct name. name. But for the rest of my time sitting here, I'm gonna call him P boy because I don't <laughs> like him. Yeah, you already don't like him. Okay, P boy it is. Uh, Gilliard and P boy. I do think though that Falco, I. Wanted to write it down. I'm so glad that you brought it up. I think Falco flying around with the sword. I think he's definitely part of it. And I think you're right in comparing him to Aaron at the beginning of the uh, series because he had those memories too in episode one. Like, why else would we start with a child being where they shouldn't be or being thrust into a situation that they're just being put in, you know, by either their family, by their world, their world's being attacked. Because I we started out, and I'm like, why is this child here? I am done asking that in this show, because children why are is places this child they shouldn't here? be all the time. Uh, it's, it is dangerous to be here. You're right, Falco. But it's interesting, because he is seemingly the only Titan candidate this far out into the battlefield. And it correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that Falco and Colt are brothers. Oh, it seems that way. Um, or I think it was said. Falco. Huh? What's, my, What's brother my brother doing, doing here? here? Okay. Yeah. Do you think these they are like Zeke's sons? Be Zeke's sons. Yes. Um, they Ooh, that would make it even hair. better. Wouldn't it make it better if Falco is supposed to be like a, a... Yeah. Yeah. And it's Zeke's son. Oh, that'd be so good. Please be the... Please be Zeke's children. Oh, I will... I, I do think the flying around the sword thing is something... That is but we don't titan. know any titans that fly, fly around yet. Well, technically, we saw titans coming out of a flying maybe, object. Maybe Falco is part of the uh, historic family. Maybe he's actually uh, well. Technically, he, he would be. He does have if he is if Zeke's he's son, Zeke's, then he that, has royal blood, which might be why he's getting the memories at the moment. Maybe. I mean, I would think Zeke would have a family by the age that it seems Zeke is. I just Maybe. don't know of a person that Zeke would marry at, that we are introduced to at the moment. It'd probably be an Eldian that hates Eldians. Probably. That sounds about right. I'm sure his grandparents like set him up with some like perfect candidate. And Colt being the successor potentially of the Beast, uh, Titan. The Beast Titan does make sense for him being Zeke's son. Mm-hmm. And for his other son to be a candidate God, for a family Titan. of Titans. I mean, you know, they might think that's a perfect idea to keep it in the, keep it in one kind keep of family, it in the family because that's then, like the Targaryens. Because wouldn't the older brother exert some amount of control over yeah. the younger brother and keep him in line? They'd also work well as a team. The kinetic bombardment. That was the name that Zeke gave, like the or the the dropping of the Titans was. That okay. was so crazy. Can I ask you what you think was up with the people? They weren't injected yet, right? Unless they have No, they didn't they, nothing needed to be up with them. But you saw some of them were like That was this. just the, probably their expression some that of them they were looked... gonna be turned into Titans. None of them looked scared or like they were aware of what was happening. Maybe they were partially drugged. I don't it's think a... anything needs to be injected into them so that Zeke can turn no. them into Titans though. So but I that's why I was wondering if you thought they were uh maybe like, not coherent yeah. and were injected with something because all of them were either making really weird like you were at the dentist and the dentist was like looking in your mouth and you're like, Yeah, look at my teeth. You know? Yeah, I do know exactly. Or they just like looked like really like, huh? Um, Galliard. Galliard seems like a pretty cool guy. Not gonna lie. Reminds me of an Adventure Time character name. Yeah, (laughs) and like I like the bone on his face. It reminds me of like I said, the Colossal Titan, uh, mixed with Armin, the Vision that we got. I, I like that addition. We got a Vision of Armin as when Armin first ate Bertholdt. He had a vision of him looking 
or seeing something that was like the Colossal Titan, but it had bones on it. It was like skeleton-y. Hmm. I've been wondering what Armin is going to look like. Is he going to be as tall? Is he going to be a little bit shorter? Because he is personally a little bit shorter than what Bertholdt is in real life. Um, but I remember the bones, but I wasn't attributing that to like him being very bony in mm. Titan form. I didn't know. It was, I'm not. I'm only saying that I haven't seen bone on Titan a whole lot. And no, we've only been seeing what we thought was ice when we were first introduced to like Annie. You know, but it's like the hardening. God, it is such a weird. It's so sad in a sense to see. Um, sorry, new characters. I have so many pages. Um, to see Falco, like it really seemed like he was looking at the enemy soldier as some as like with some hope that he would see the humanity inside of himself and not just the fact that he was an Eldian. Because what is more human than following the actual? Oh god. What is more human than following the actual laws of war? Yeah. You know, war, very human. But, like, it also is pretty human to follow the laws of war, which is if someone has either surrendered or is gravely wounded, you don't just necessarily leave them there. You might take prisoners of war. Oh god, war is so horrible. Yeah. Yeek even said it. War is a terrible thing. So... This, uh, uh, what what was the other side that I had told you to write down? Uh, Mid-East Allied Forces. Do you Fort think Slava. the Mid-East Allied Forces, how long do you think they've been developing anti-Titan shells? Do you think it's just them? Do you mm. think other countries have done it? I don't think it's just them because um, something Zeke says at the very end is that the era of Titans is ending. Yeah. And so they are going to keep, Marley is... Marley is the focus of the rest of the civilized, technologically advanced civilizations. So my question is the intention. So obviously, um, obviously we have Marley's intention at the beginning to have a mission to try to get the founding Titan. Mm -hmm. I would assume so it would be more comfortable yeah, to retain power. Yeah, do you think the power. resources were even a real thing at this point? Maybe. I, I think it was just the founding titan maybe at this the point. Maybe was the resource. I don't That's know. That's what I, I, I'm thinking. It was like ah, it was like I military lingo. I disagree. I think that 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 it is real because if they get the military resources, then they finally wouldn't have to rely on the titan's powers to be the ones in charge. Because maybe the land that Marley's on doesn't have enough fuel Correct. for the airships and the armored trains and the cannons yes. that are anti-titan and, and i'm like I'm like looking at how this has played out because marley obviously had to uh put their current mission on hold right and mm -hmm. focus on this front on the mid-east allied forces thank you uh they're focusing on that front so i would love to know the intent of that front that's attacking them because one might think okay the person, like, we're a united nation. We're, let, let's let, just say, like, we're four countries, right? And then one country has the power of, like, a nuke or something that could blow up the whole galaxy or just be more powerful unfairly than anybody else. Let's try to remove that thing, that piece of equipment mm -hmm. from the equation. Or are they trying to gain power over it? Like, do you think are the they people trying to are, take it for themselves? Yeah. Do you think that they're trying to fight Marley to be king of the hill? Or do you think they're trying to fight Marley to be like, all right, let's just try to have peace and not have somebody who has this kind of power? Depends who threw the first stone. Who started the war? I can't put it past Marley to not start a war and he maybe even start a war that they can't finish and they need the Eldians to finish for them. Yeah. Um, especially if they, we have the Titan powers, so we're cocky now, you know? Um, so I could see the possibility that they started this war. Uh, or, But I could also see the possibility that the rest of the world was like, we need to stop Marley and the Titans before they get, they, they get even stronger. Yeah. So it's like basically like, squashing a flame before it can burn down everything oh 
god, if Marley and Eldia came together, that sounds like the most terrifying military front that you'd ever face. You wouldn't have a chance. Mm -hmm. If you had, like, you you have one half of the potential Titan's power, maybe less, governing and seemingly ruling over many people and holding their own more than well in a military sense. Mm -hmm. And that's with only a piece of what could be that full power. If you had the founding Titan, you could use the beast titan or the founding titan to awaken all eldians into their titan form and they wouldn't just be walking aimlessly Mm -mm. you know they wouldn't just be crawling around they would be all charging toward you with a directive terrifying terrifying Terrifying. (laughs) no wonder they made it like cushy enough for eldians to like survive and keep multiplying because they they don't want multi like eldians to just all die you know because they need eldians and they need eldians to keep procreating i think that an a, the first season maybe season two into this uh into this series i'm having like uh and a founding titan flashback here okay i felt like i had said that the creator of the show felt like they had already stabbed me and have twisted the knife in, right? Mm -hmm. The creator of the show introducing Falco and Gabby and, like, Colt, and these are all cool characters that I can sympathize with. Yeah, and uh, these are all characters that I can sympathize with and immediately try to think of all these different perspectives and how, like, there's no moral right area and all these people have Mm -hmm. tortured lives and it's, like, such a depressing story and a tragedy. This is the author stabbing me, twisting the knife, and then just, like, flipping me off a bunch while, like, running around me in circles. Like, I'm just thinking, like, again and again, for somebody like Falco to have me perceive them as somebody who has some some hope of humanity in another race or another person i'm like what was your upbringing man like i already knew knew a little bit about grisha's upbringing and that was horrible and that's all after seeing the utter tragedy that is aaron yeager in his upbringing and i'm just like god have like happiness it it, it has to exist somewhere no like god it's just It's a hard life. I hate that it's unfortunately kind of realistic. I know. We're seeing it on such like a microscope scale of like, oh, yes, we were just in a country going through something horrible and terrible and having fighting and infighting. And then let's just like look here at another place that's having the same thing. And I'm like, but then if you like zoom in, you know that like, before a war, when a war is not happening, there are peaceful days as much as the people can have for themselves, depending on the ruling that they are under. Um, and, like, uh, the Eldians within Paradis had peace until the Marlians came back for a vengeance to get the Founding Titan. And it, it just, it's sucky, but it's so, like, yep, this is a kid. This is what a kid's life is like once war hits. I in- he lost his mom. I intend to watch anime to take me out of life as a distraction, whether it's for good <laughs> or bad. I don't watch anime with the intent to make me self-reflect on how horrific mm. this world can look. Or hate, like, human, like, that human cycle that Yuri was talking about of, like, the, it's inevitable that we'll just keep fighting. It's- It's defeating. It's, um, I think, okay, do you know who William Shatner is? It's an actor, right? So, yeah, he was a, he was apparently, I believe, in Star Trek. Um, and. Isn't that like this symbol? Yeah, like Spock. I had only seen the new ones with Chris Pine, but I think he was, uh, Captain (laughs) Kirk in the old ones, I think. Oh, okay, maybe. But, uh. I was more of like a Star Wars kid growing up. I've never a Star seen Trek Star kid. Wars. I've seen Star the new Star like Chris Pine Star Trek. I haven't seen the original. I hear good things, but anyway, William Shatner. Um, he is obviously a very famous person for a very famous role. Uh, got to have the unique privilege of going up into space with like the likes of Jeff Bezos, right? Mm-hmm. 
probably because of the reason of his notoriety. You know? Oh, if Star Trek was yeah, his notoriety, yeah. then yeah. After okay. coming back to Earth, he, I think it was easy to celebrate. And Jeff Bezos, for one, amongst, he, he did listen, but he also was one to pop champagne bottles and be like, oh my God, look what we just did. And I'm, of course, paraphrasing here, but <laughs> William Shatner came back with not a thought of celebration, but a thought of devastation and isolation and the thought of this one lonely planet being the that of this vast empty existence that is space and this one paradise paradise this one planet of growth and 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 human life and other life and wilderness it's so horrific to see what humanity itself has done to the planet in regards to global warming uh, like or or just just humanity in itself how we treat other people different races different countries and i'm adding on to that point because i think it is one that is god so true and so devastating and regardless of your intention in life or what place you're in in life you're just one person and is pure intent that you have there is going to be somebody else who's the opposite side of that coin and that's a very upsetting reality to think that you're in and that's what this show reminds me of so thank you attack on titan it's thank an, you <laughs> it's an isolating reality to know that there's never ever going to be a consensus that everyone everyone can hop onto and agree with and be be chill and have peace like it's isolating it's devastating and i feel like we know it as the viewers and not just in this universe. And it, that's what these kids are realizing in this show. Now teenagers, the ones that we have previously followed. These seem to be kids in, in, in Marley. But that's what, like, I think that's why Aaron in his moody teenager outbursts, as it was made to seem, that's what he's realizing. And that's what every person who had the founding Titan power realized or came to the realization of is that this is just but even with what, that power do you do we're anything? back there even if you did even if you don't do anything and you just sit back it's still gonna just happen if you interfere it's still gonna keep happening even so it's with, just like frustrating it's like even with the devil of all earth agreeing to an agreement we're not living in a perfect world yeah i watch anime to dumb story elements and real life elements down enough that a simple answer could potentially be enough to be happy and i guess that's why this show is regarded as high as it is from what i understand because it it's truly um a real story i was a uh, at my birth family's house and my birth family doesn't like and my adoptive family they don't do anything anime they don't watch like they're very like out of uh they're very like america you know and <laughs> i uh was talking to my birth father who like had recently learned about what autosave was in the channel and he apparently tried to watch one of our first videos of attack on titan and he had never seen it and he ended up watching the first two seasons of attack on titan this is when we were about at halfway through season three and at a party he was trying to describe it to one of his uh friends who was also about the age of like mid 50s right and he's a police officer he uh the most the closest thing to anime he's ever watched is probably like a popeye cartoon 30 years ago and he my birth dad was describing it to him he was like yeah it was this but it had to have been like a great like memoir book novel thousands of pages of like a detailed like storybook you know mm -hmm. and That's i was like totally what i was, was like nah dude i believe it's like a, a manga like uh <laughs> you could maybe compare Pictures. it to like comic books in america it's not a one-for-one -one comparison but it's actually not something like like shakespearean because that's how he was describing it like and it's that's these the... like thick books but i think that that's the, like studied in college by english majors everywhere how good of a job must you have done as a writer in world building and individual storytelling must you have been and done to be able to have an audience react like it is like i am like i'm I I'm, mean, every middle-aged man that we've shown this show to, they have enjoyed your it. Your dad? 
my dad, dad, my uncle, you know, like, <laughs> I, it's, it's crazy because if I, I feel like this was the perfect show to recommend to people who, who weren't necessarily anime fans and or were kind of older and thought that, oh, anime is like a kid's thing or it's a cartoon or something along those lines. And I think what you need to do is show them something right off the bat that has like story and something they can actually connect to or like understand or not you know sometimes there's some crazy stuff in anime or i don't know this is just a really great story to show someone who doesn't watch anime or thinks they're too old for it it's this isn't an adult anime because it has blood and gore this is an adult anime because having blood and gore in it makes sense and there's Mm. reasons for it and Mm -hmm. they choose when to do it it's not just, ooh, I'm mature, edgy, which I like. I'm a huge fan of, typically, and I am. But this is just like, oh, I'm just going to, like, I'm going to really embrace the manga medium as it is and then just write a fucking, like, story that, regardless of how you consume it, is going to resonate with people. Like, holy, man. I own a, a Song of Ice and Fire world book that's, like, this big and it has, like, maps and stuff of the world. That's what this is to me. This is so, such, a, like, I I'm I talked to you about this earlier today. I'm fearful that if and when we inevitably finish or catch up, or I don't even, I don't know if they're, how, if they're continuing making this and how long they're going to continue this series. When that day comes, though, I'm a little scared that I won't be able to find something that will hit the same notes that this has. And I, I'm kind of addicted to it. I'm also really worried about that. I feel like if we asked anyone, like, I'm so worried about it that I feel like if we asked someone, like, hey, what would you recommend once I finish this? You know, they'd be like, oh, I just rewatch. And I'm, like, scared if that is the response. Because I want there to be something that is... um competitively entertaining in this same checks the same boxes um the same amount of world building characters with different wants and needs and ways to go about obtaining those morally kind of all over the place uh very just like human um great storytelling great placement of Easter eggs and, and, and things for you to theorize about, you know, there, there's been so much that can come from watching this show. Obviously, it, if we could talk about a show, a 20 minute an episode show for sometimes way, way over an hour for just one of those episodes, like, where do we find something else like that? Yeah. It's it's scary. I because is it like weird? It is scary. Like, is it weird to be scared of whatever emptiness might come of not having something that I so like so much want to discuss and and talk about for hours? That's hard to find. It's right? multi layered because yes, it is hard to find from my experience at least. But it's like. It, it's such a bittersweet thing sometimes for me because, like, in regards to this channel, like, I reckon that if you and I decided to watch this anime off the channel, it would it would be somewhat the same. I think you and I would still have the conversations. We'd probably still space it out as, as we do. But if we ever found something like this again, like, full transparency, pulling behind the curtain, like, we don't look at stuff, but we are sent stuff sometimes or like let in a little bit. And we heard this very early on when we first started. And then like here and there again and again, like it's the internet. We're bound to hear some negativity and that's fine. I'm okay with that. And people uh, like have said negative things or think that we like have seen the series before and whatever. I think that it might impact me going like if we ever found something like this again on how readily excited i would be to posting videos on it because i think like i wouldn't change a thing with how we've done this show because i've enjoyed every moment about it with you but like i don't know like i i think that in a perfect world it'd be everything but like other people uh i don't know 
coming coming to influence that feeling and obviously that's the reason we stay away from things in the first place but like i love dissecting this show with you and i'm scared that if we ever find another show like i might be like oh let's just watch it and dissect it and like not do anything with it you know because like I, I this is I cannot tell you how much I love this show, but how much sitting down and like writing notes about a show and like right. dissecting it, maybe a video essay. Like afterwards this, this is it, important. But... This show is important to like us a- as people, yeah, a- and as an activity that we are doing together. And even if there weren't like a camera in place, how we watch this show and how we enjoy it and how much we do enjoy it is, is an experience that we we are having that we love and if other people love that's awesome joining in on our experience like that is amazing that's cool and that's what we would love that and this show is just really important to us like at the end of the day we're a relationship we're not uh an llc or auto save partnership like i'm anna and i have like a relationship outside of this and shocked people out there listening to this yeah <gasps> what? And i thought they were brother and sister we've gotten that a lot we at the um, beginning people did think we were siblings people still might who knows people uh, still might if you do don't let us break that i know ben's adopted <laughs> but i know that i am not <laughs> um but uh that, and i've met his birth family yes so. there you go okay that was necessary but i I don't know. I am really glad that we have watched this on the channel so far. And I think that, like, it's a good reminder that you and I, like, this is, like, really good time for us as, like, a couple and relationship. Like, at least in my opinion, because it's just, like, talking about something new to us Mm -hmm. both. And we're both excited about and we both can um, add into. And it's not just one person, like, that cares about it and the other person just like mm-hmm, Sorry, this is I, the thing you really care about yes and i got off track a little bit because what i was saying was that we are a relationship and we are real and we work a lot of the times nine to five jobs then come home get home at six and work until 10 and then have to go to sleep for the next day and yes it's very busy and it's very draining sometimes but within those times I, it's not a chore and it's fun and it's good really like it's a good time with each other when it's a moment like this when it's a show like this when it's a time like this and we're being forced to sit down together <laughs> for long periods of time forced. and then you can't leave. talk about something with each other like face to face even if there's like a camera and a microphone yeah. in the way but we're sharing something together and, and I, even I, I feel like some people could get out of the loop of that with like once they're together for a while and then they go to work and they get home, you know, they probably have separate activities, which we do have separate interests. Yeah. Very true. And I, I guess just to like put a end to it a and like full cir- it. Yeah, put a lid on it and like full circle it. I love this show and it's very unique in its <laughs> attention to detail that leads us to have these long discussions mm-hmm. that I cherish If there is ever another show that I keep hearing recommendations for like it, I hope that, I don't know, at the end of the day, I'm going to watch that show with you and we're going to talk about it like we did this. I hope I'm at a good good enough place to uh, uh, let people who I do know enjoy uh, like watching the show with us and like... I don't know. We've always been like, yeah, our family kind of thing. One of the things I've been most excited for is once we're done to go back and read the comments and stuff, you know, because I'm having such a good time doing oh, it. Oh, we're with you. doing it. Like once we finish oh, yeah. this series, like we're, we're like, reading. If we're people, reading things. I, and it's an issue because I don't know how much of what. Hell, like I, I know the dislike button's gone on YouTube, but we like... <laughs> I don't, if, Do if people I even if, like us, I don't know. <laughs> like I've put, I've watched people cause I hate them before. Like, <laughs> oh no. Oh my God. But, uh, Why no, did you but, put that like thought in my head? That is terrifying. I, no, really though. I just, uh, I know people like watch our videos or like we have subscribers. We have like people who like handle things for us and like read comments for us. Like we know, and we like love you guys. I'm just, uh, this show is really personal to me. I don't know. It has such a place in my heart. And I think that a lot of that is because of uh, the the people that we've met through the show, through the channel, who have, like, sent us, like, Attack on Titan capes. And then, like, just 
our enjoyment in the series. It's really nice. And we're, and we're choosing. Yeah. Like, um, we don't have to sit here after we watch the episode and talk about it for as long as we do. But it's so much fun. But we love it <laughs> and we care about it personally yeah that we want to just sit here and talk about it because so it's be like it's it. fun to us and it's, it's enjoyable i like i watch reaction content i've never watched a reaction content or channel for their discussion personally i've never like i've listened to discussions here and there for like old episodes of my hero you know like back when i watched my hero uh, reaction channels before we started but i never really stayed for discussions and my favorite part about doing this like i i i'm very I'm a very big fan of reaction channels that end up having a video that's just, hey, what's up guys, I'm watching this video, watch it and close it out. There's nothing wrong with that if that's what you do. But what's come of us doing a reaction channel is us finding that we really like just talking about shows yeah, together. Yeah, like we like, don't know if like people, I'm sure like a majority of people click out like after we're done. Yeah. And, yeah. and we might just be like sitting here talking to no one, uh, but we're talking to each other. You know, yeah. and we're talking about it. And if people want to stay and listen, then that is makes me happy. It's God, cool. I would love to have like a, okay, we're done with the entire series of Attack on Titan. You guys want to like call in and we can talk, like have a conversation about uh like about random subjects about like characters ideas theories like or just like comments we can go over that yes. so, cuz we don't have any risk of spoilers at that point and we actually get to well I, as as long as this ends where the manga ends yes uh then then we don't have risk of spoilers god i don't i have like those manga readers they i always have no things i've always had dreams of talking to friends and stuff about like shows that i like and how things have gone in my life, I don't typically, I have that a lot. You're the closest I've had to it. And it'd be amazing if like we could have other like friends and like just people to talk to about th this type of show. Like mm -hmm. you're the only person I talk to about this show and that's awesome. But I want to talk to other people too. Agreed. I, I think that's why I'm like, keep my dad's like behind yeah. on Attack on Titan. He's still on season. He just finished season two. No, no, just, just finished, finished season one. He was on. No, season no, he was at the end of season two. He hadn't started season three yet. Or maybe like, oh, no, no he started season, season two. two because he just got to he'd the episode seen the where Beast Ryan Titan Bert, and then yeah. he stopped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, he just got to the episode where they confessed of being the Colossus. And I keep, like, I get excited every time he, like, yeah. texts me after he finishes, like, his little, like, mini binges he does of episodes whenever he gets time. And he's like, Aaron's yelling and they this just happened. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it's so, like, exciting. Yeah. Especially because he, it, he's starting afterwards. And so it's like now... I am getting to experience talking to someone that I had watched the show and like hear how excited they are or like what what they've just seen and I'm like wow this is this is fun I wish everyone would watch shows that I would tell them to watch yeah I I I want that more <laughs> with people like my, my little brother started watching the show and then when he started watching the show the next thing i heard from him because i don't talk to him too often it was that he was done and then i haven't talked to him since yeah about it i'm I, lucky that my dad got preoccupied with other things this would be so cool i get to talk to it with you that's all that matters yes. i have fun i have a good time also uh titans were cg this episode uh in like full i'm not saying there was no cg used before the season but there was uh definitely it was definite more and i thought it looked great that being said, I wonder how it looked in the non-Blu-ray version, because I can imagine it, it It seems very easy to mess up, but it looked great this episode. I had no complaints. I, I don't really know what the difference was other than I think that it was possibly the animation was different, and I think the subtitles might have also been slightly different. The animation in regards to the Titans, it looks like they're more fluid in three, dimen in three dimensions. Like, if okay. you look, if you look so at their I don't think like anything else was different, and it was just like the Titans. Oh, I think that I think the animation was completely different. I think that that's the biggest change, though, um, because it seemed like ninety percent of the Titan animation was CG, and that it looked amazing. It I would love amazing. to watch it in comparison. Me too. Oh, that'd be great. We can see because if we the, can do that the, before next episode. Yeah, the, that'd the, be awesome. did the Blu-ray come come out after? Probably I would after this. The other version. So this is like uncut on Funimation. Yeah. 
I well, yeah, definitely. I think the whole point of a Blu-ray is to like redo shots that you didn't have time to do to that degree because mm, they were trying to push the product out. Yeah. Or they just went back at the end. They're like, "Huh, we could have done this one a little better." Mm. Um, but it looked great. That'd be a cool thing, though, to see side by sides of like what it looked like in different versions. I got a little worried at first when I heard that there was anything to do with different versions mm, or different yeah, animation. I was like, "Is this gonna look like the same world or the same characters or anything like that?" And it it felt the same to me. It felt like I was still. The character design, how they're drawn, all still. I am going to make an executive decision okay. and say that we can, we're can. we going to watch the same thing in both versions. And that thing is going to be, which I think might be a pretty good evidence of the of a bigger scale, when Reiner lands down in the castle, mm. right? Okay. Um, well, yeah, that was... I, if, the, if it was the animation of the Titans, then... Well, it could be the animation of everything, but okay. this He's running. being included in it. Like, the entire time, the Titan's true to form. There's nothing sketchy about it. It looks amazing. You know? Mm -hmm. Like, I have no complaints here. All the details are great. The eyes are great. It looks... I think, and then we get one more thing, maybe, and then it's over. That's a pretty decent moment, right? Yeah. Reiner chucking a tank. And you see walls. the people, you know? I When I saw that, I was like, oh, oh. All right, and now version simulcast. Maybe they changed this too. Who knows? We don't know. We don't know. This anything. is still Funimation. Should we try Crunchyroll just to be... Maybe just to be totally different to be and crazy, totally wild different. and crazy. Let's be wild and crazy. I missed the subtitle of the one guy yelling at him, you son of a whore, when he was shooting at Reiner. And I was yeah. like, I missed that when we were watching. Um. Okay, so... Does it look... I think I'm just don't see anything different at the moment. That... Hell. They're... Nothing is sticking out for me. I'm not seeing them side by side, so. I think side by side would probably be the best. I just want to look at like this like close up. Oh no, this looks about the same as yeah. well though. It looks good though on both at the moment. Yeah. Um interesting though. I would like to see what the details are after we're done. Maybe yes. like a before and after Blu-ray. Maybe we aren't even watching the Blu-ray. Maybe we are going we to learn. I think that we're are. watching the Blu-ray. We bought <laughs> how about you tell them? I don't want to go over it. I'm sad about it. You go. Uh, we bought a the Blu-ray disc, um, and we bought a a player, mm -hmm. um, and we have to run it through the laptop that we use because we need OBS to able to to be able to record the screen uh, at the same time that we're watching it, and so we needed a portable DVD Blu-ray player, and it didn't work. It, it didn't work, and so we ran around town today looking for portable DVD Blu-ray players, and everyone just had regular old DVD players. And then a Best Buy employee lied to us. Yeah, he, we had it in our awkward. hand to, like, a, a, a different Blu-ray player. It didn't end up working. Well, it did. It but worked, it was, but then Windows difficult. 10 sucks with VLC. That yeah. wasn't working. Other things suck. But anyway, too. we had something that technically would have worked in our hands. Yeah. And then the employee was like, yeah, no, that's not what you want. And yeah. led us to the other side of the store. And then he snuck back like an hour later and bought it. And inevitably, though, we got to the point where the <laughs> Blu-ray that we bought had an, a redeem code in it for Crunch, mm -hmm. for Funimation to redeem that. And we're hoping that it did redeem the version of the Blu-ray yeah. by being uncut, quote unquote. Yes. I don't know, though. I guess I'm we'll enjoying find it. Out. It was a crazy episode. We're talking still, but that was nuts. That was... <laughs> I don't even know where to begin or end. I think it's a... I don't know where to end. Yeah. Other than um, I, want, I guess we're going to stay in Marley for a little bit. It seems like we're kind of following these candidates at the moment. I agree. I think we're going to be here for It'd a bit. It'd be weird to just leave them for the next episode. I do want to know what, like, air If it, it's been four years. If it's been four years. What are years, they doing? I, what what that's does the story great, look like? I think that's a great 
place to end off to. What do they look like? What are they doing? I imagine they are preparing for war. What advancements have they made in the last four years? I imagine that they are preparing for war at a very extreme rate based off of what Aaron has seen through Grisha's memories. I think Aaron's going to utilize that to try to gauge what military level the Marlians are at and try to pass that within the walls. How many years does Aaron have left? How he many had... years did he have four years ago? Was it seven? No. Eight. Eight. Maybe. Need to, needless to say, I, I just don't think Aaron has much Eight years time left. left. Yeah. Okay, so Aaron has four, four more years, years left. left. Oh my god. Mikasa's a wreck of a person, I bet. She's I wonder if she's moved out of denial into like a different stage of grief over this. Um yeah. but yeah, I, I wanna see them, but I kind of think we're staying here for a little bit. I agree. The four years left thing's kind of intimidating. I would love to know if uh if you do go into that crystallization state, you get to like hold the timer. I don't know. It maybe Are we training people? Are we training people to take over if we now know this thirteen year rule? Aaron might have a successor. Mm. I don't know. <sighs> Alright. Are you good? Yes. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we hope to see you next time.